We have a lot of new people on Clipson's food safety and nutrition team, and they have their fingers in every single pie. They always wash their hands very carefully That's before right. they put their fingers in pies, however. Right. And Marie Hagelin and Chad Carter are here with us tonight. And Marie, tell us what we're going to discuss tonight. Food waste, okay. also known as Clean Your Plate Club. Right, we want to make sure we're not wasting so much food because we tend to do that. And as you mentioned, we have this abundance of food available to us. So how do we use that and not waste it? And Respectfully, Chad, yeah. yeah. So how big a problem is it, Chad? So I think it's a lot bigger than most people would think. Um, basically, about 30 to 40 percent of all the food that's um, grown or produced in the United States is ultimately wasted. Now, is that stuff that's left in the field or um, that goes bad in the grocery store? Where is the so this the, uh, is the, from, bur the main the main responsibility culprit? So this is generally from field to fork. Um, uh, basically, on the consumer level, we're looking at about half of that waste, Whoa. one third to a half of that waste is at consumer level. So this is when we're buying things and then throwing them in the trash. And you've got some figures about what that costs a family. It's not. It, and it can be really rather really considerable. Well, and it adds up. So on a day-to-day, -day, we don't generally think about sure. it that much. But it, for the average American, like, it's about 20 pounds a month um, in food waste. Per family member? Per person. Whoa. So this this amounts to about 30 or $40 per person per month. Gosh. And then if you're talking about a family of four, yeah. I mean, this can add up to almost $1,500 a year. Gosh, so that's a chunk of change. It gets yeah. costly. Um, what we don't think about um, are the other costs associated with growing that food and producing that food. Um, we're using energy, mm -hmm. we're using land, and we're using quite a bit of water. So to produce that food and then turn around and throw it away, not only are we wasting our, our purchasing dollars, but our resources as well. Well, and you know, when you are in a county where they're having to get permits for new landfills and things like that, you realize that that food's going somewhere and it weighs something That's and it's right. taking up space. And so you've got costs to, that, that are coming back to the produce, to the consumers as the form of taxes to support the infrastructure that's necessary to take care of all that waste. Right. And food waste is the single largest component going into the landfills. So it's it about 21% um, of the landfill is food waste. Good heavens. And about, it's only about 5% of that food um, that we're discarding is being diverted into composting activities. Wow. So. Goodness. Okay. So well, what are some of the things we can do to combat this? So mainly the idea is kind of coincides with healthy eating and that you want to shop wisely. So when you're shopping, of course, you want to make a list. You want to make sure that you're only getting the things that you can consume and that you're not going to throw away. And that can be to just be a little bit of culinary know-how, like know how much, you know, you, what's going to make and then how much you can actually use. Um, another thing is one of those, if you see a lot now, they have those meals that they'll mail to you and you, the ingredients. And one of the big thing, the perks of that is that you, only, you use exactly what you need for those meals. Oh. So if you think about that in terms of when you're shopping, like, you want over by certain pro, and okay. we're telling mainly with perishable foods. And again, like one of the things to look out for are sales for those perishable mm -hmm. items, and make sure you can actually go through it. And you know, when things are packaged, sometimes I'll come home with this, there are five cucumbers in the bag. Well, two of them rot because I would have done better to buy two one day and two another day. I just so, did that recently. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it just happens. It really does. Yeah. And yeah. I thought, like, well, how did this go bad so yeah. quickly? But okay. yeah. So and then pre-cut. Um, fruits and vegetables and things, you might, unless you know you can get through them, you might want to get the whole version so that you can have more time in the refrigerator before you get to actually cooking okay. them. Well, I think you've got an example of something that all of us often have, which is broccoli and broccoli stems, because people often just like the top. Mm -hmm. So they don't look particularly attractive right <laughs> now, but do you think there's any hope for these broccoli stems? Well, yeah, um, there, there's a few things that you can do with broccoli stems, like once you've cut off the florets and had those in your salad or put them in your stir fry, you can actually cut the stems up as well and add those to your stir fry or add those to other things, soups and things. Mm -hmm. Um, what we're going to do uh, t tonight is um, use the broccoli to make a broccoli slaw. Which is summertime slaw. That's what, right. what could be yeah. better? Everybody likes slaw. Yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's a quick, um, easy way to sort of use up those extra stems when you have them. Um, so basically we've got some already grated up. Uh, it's fairly easy to grate these on a box grater if you've got some sort of like large hole grater okay. of any sort. Um, we peeled a little bit of this harder outer covering off. You can eat this as well. It's completely edible. Um, but we just do it because it's a little easier to grate. So just kind of grate this broccoli down a little bit. We've got some already kind of grated up in the bowl here. We just want to show you how easy it is to just sort of hard. get this yeah. shredded uh -huh. um, so that you're kind of utilizing every part of this food. And the little bit that you have, that little nub you have left over, you can just take a knife and just chop them up. Yeah, yeah, or you could yeah. just snack it right sure. when you're... Uh... Okay. Yeah, but this is pretty quick. Yeah. 
And you can I do a lot more. Yeah. I've been making pimento cheese lately, so I've been <laughs> grating like a maniac. I'm really a great grater. The main thing is to not get your fingernails in it. Be careful about sure. that. I've done okay. that before. Okay. Well. All right. So we got enough to start with. Yeah. All right. And the idea, you could always mix it. We're doing primarily broccoli, um, slaw, but you could add carrots, cabbage. You could do a mix of stuff. So, sure. Say so you only had two things of broccoli, you could do that and then add it to something But if else. you've got a little nub of cabbage or something left over, just throw that in it too. Yes. It's a great way to use those little bits that are left over. Part of a pepper, a little thing of carrot. Yeah. Like a little onion if you want to those Whatever you got kind of laying around. Well, what are we going to do to dress it up so it tastes really yummy? We're going to make a poppy seed dressing. Oh, that sounds fun. And it's got a, just a bunch of normal ingredients that you probably have in your, the pantry. The only thing, the poppy seeds might be something that you might not have and you don't have to really put them in there. It's just okay. for, it's more but for they're fun. they're pretty easy to find. Yeah, yeah, you can get at the grocery store. So we got a quarter cup of just regular vegetable oil. Alrighty. You could use whatever kind of oil you prefer. Um, and I used to use peanut oil, but so many people have an allergy that I don't use that if I'm going to take it to a party. I just think that... That was I, a good tip. Yeah, yes. yes. Okay. Um, and then we have some vinegar. We have two tablespoons of vinegar to give it that. Okay, so we started tank. with a half a cup. Fourth of a cup. A fourth of a cup. Okay. So we did half vinegar, half oil. Okay. Um, then we're going to add sugar. So we have two tablespoons of sugar. One time I was doing this and I left it out, and it still tastes okay, but it do, it's better when it has a little bit yeah, of sugar. Yeah, I think so. I like that kind of southern slaw, too. Yeah. So we got two And that's not that much sugar. Yeah, yeah, it's not in the grand scheme of all the broccoli that that's you're going to be consuming. Um, we're going to do, let's see what's next. We have a teaspoon of mayonnaise. Come so on. Not, yeah. Just to bind it. Just to bind Just it. Just to bind it. Okay. So this is healthy-ish. We also have a half a teaspoon of ground mustard. Uh -huh. And you could use just if you had some Dijon mustard. You sure. Could put it on there, or whatever kind of mustard. And then just some salt. A half a teaspoon of salt. Okay. And then the poppy seeds. Ta-da! Teaspoon of poppy seeds. It goes a long way. Okay. And just a just, teaspoon. Just a teaspoon. For this, this amount. For this this one. is yeah. not This is not that much. So you would want to just whisk this together until it combines. Um, you could also just throw this in a mason jar. And yeah, yeah. Shake, shake it, it it'd probably be easier to, yeah. to deal and with. And everybody's got their favorite slaw dressing, so you don't necessarily have to sure. use this one. You can Good use kind of anything that you like, one that's been in the family or just kind of however you like to do it. Yeah, or just experiment. Right, yeah. different vinegars, different things. Yeah. All right, so, and then it's really simple from here. So we have our grated broccoli. And a few other vegetables. A few other things fun because we had a little nub of this and a little nub of that left in the you could also put some of the broccoli in there. So if you had some broccoli, oh sure you could. Spear, yeah, so you want, yeah. The other thing that's going to make it this fun, we have pumpkin seeds. Oh. Roasted pumpkin seeds. You could add your own, whatever kind of nut tickles your fancy. Um, and then we have dried cranberries. Well, Margarita would like for us to use some pecans because we grow mm -hmm. pecans right here in South Carolina. Yes, yes. pecans would be excellent. And they're delicious. I love pecans. Nothing better. We had a pecan tree growing up, and I loved it. And well, then, until the aphid, till you park your car under it, and then the honeydew from the aphids gets all over your car, which can be, yeah, or, or on your clothesline, yeah. Then, so now you're just going to toss it. And then you just toss it. I would let this, like, sit for a minute. Oh, of I course think it's got to yeah, let the flavors go throw through. Throw it in the yeah. refrigerator, let it sit for, like, an hour. If, you th if you're thinking ahead, just like you should be thinking ahead when and you're shopping. And since this is so fresh, we can have, you know, what's left over still going to be perfectly delicious the next day. Yeah. Yes, you're, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you could pair this with your barbecue or whatever kind yeah. of. Yeah, and you could, you know, summer. put it as a topping on hamburgers. Or I like slaw dogs. Mm -hmm. You know, don't you? I yep. think that's a fun yep. thing to have. And this yeah. would be a little twist be a on delicious. a slaw dog. Wouldn't that be yeah. a fun twist on a slaw dog? It really so. would be. Well, this has really slaw been a good idea. We had this, you know, we had something that probably we were just going to say, oh, we'll feed it to the worms, but that's really not the right <laughs> attitude right. to take. I mean, yeah. we we like to see it composted, if, but if nothing but, else, yeah. right? Before yeah. you compost it, you think about ways to well, use it. Well, and you know, it's fresh and things that mm -hmm. are that are fresh like this, some, you know, that have that you've just grated. You know, you haven't lost as many of the nutrients as if it had been sitting around for a right. while. And I think that's something we should think mm -hmm. about too, mm -hmm. instead of maybe buying things that are already pre-cut because. They do lose nutrients as they sit out. Yes. Yeah. Now, how about the um, sell-by date? Let's take a minute just to talk quickly oh. about that. Yes. Does, do we have to throw things away just because well, it says? Well, so I think that, that that's a big part of um, why people throw things away because they look, they've got something in their fridge. They look at that date. They say, oh, it's past the date, and then they throw it away. Well, I think what people don't understand is, is that date is uh, not. Arbitrary. It's arbitrary mm -hmm. for the most part. Um, the sell-by date is used by um, grocery stores and retailers to know when to take things on and off the shelf. But most of those best buy and use by dates are set by the manufacturer. Not by the government. Not by not the government. Not by anybody who came in and did scientific research. They're not research. regulated at all. Okay. Um, and it's a quality. It's a quality in the eyes of the manufacturer date. It's not a food safety date. So that food is generally safe past that um, use by or sell by or whatever date is on it. 
um, the thing to worry about more than the date is how you've handled that food. How you've stored it. That's right. So mm -hmm. cold things stay cold. Um, you know, you can't leave your pork chops in a hot car overnight and expect them to be safe. Yeah. Um, so it's just kind of making sure that you store your food um, cold, put it away when you're done with it, and defrost things properly is going to give you that extended shelf life. Um, I always say kind of use your senses. Don't necessarily taste things that you think have gone bad. But you bad, can smell. But you yeah. can smell yeah. and you can kind of look and see yeah. if they've gone see bad. See if the color and if, still looks good. Yeah. If there's no signs of spoilage, which spoilage isn't going to make you sick either, generally. If there's no sign of spoilage, then that food's generally okay. okay. So we just need to be more careful about kind of using things up until they're bad rather than just trusting that date all the time and throwing things away. Well, y'all have really given me some ideas to think about it, that, you know, it's not just my being you know you know losing some money and you know and that it's just and that it, it actually amounts to something it could be you know over a thousand dollars per family and then the associated cost with it mm -hmm. you know of, of landfills and all of that and, and 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 the things often are perfectly delicious so i bet you've got a place where we can read about um, reducing food waste probably at him clemson's home and garden information center that is correct. We have a fact sheet about food waste at the Home and Garden Information Center. If you go there and in the search, just type food waste, it'll pop up. And is the recipe there as well? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm going to count on y'all to come up with some other recipes, and you'll put those there too. And I want to thank y'all for coming down here tonight and helping us. Very glad to be here. Anytime. Thanks for having us. Okay, and I'm going to come over and taste that afterwards. It looks really yummy and, cr and crunchy.